Hello, welcome to this Solid Tech SolidWorks video demonstration. Um, I'm Darren Silsby, application engineer at Solid Tech, and I'm going to be taking a quick look today at uh, PhotoView 360 and some of the tools that are in there. So as we can see, we've got this uh, cup placed in our model at the moment. So we're just going to take a look at the tools that are available to us. So if we go up to our view settings, first I'm going to turn on Real View Graphics. Now that I've done that, I can go ahead and apply a material to my cup here. So I'm going to go for a, a glass material, and I'm going to go ahead and select this uh, brown thick glass. If I drag that material over to my cup and I drop it on, SolidWorks gives me the options. I can apply it either to a face or to the body or to the entire part. So I'm going to apply it to the part here. Now that I've done that, I'm ready to go ahead and put a, a camera in so that I control where I'm going to be viewing this from when I go ahead and do my render. So I'm going to go over to this within my Display Manager tab. I'm going to go to the button that says View Scene, Lights and Cameras. So go ahead and click on that. And down on the cameras, you can see I currently haven't got any in there, so I'm going to right click and I'm going to add a camera. Now what you can see here is my view splits into two, so this is what the camera is seeing over in the right, and on the left I've got a bit of control over my camera, so I can zoom in and out of this just as I would any other SolidWorks view. So currently it's on target by selection, so I can select which part of the cup I want to target on, and you can see that moves around with my view as I go ahead and move it. And again, with the camera, I've got the same sort of controls you'd expect. I can zoom it in, I can move it up or down, and I can go ahead and move it from side to side, and it will affect the view, as you can see there on the right-hand side. Another option, which we won't play around with too much, is the depth of field. If you want something to appear into or out of focus there, you can see what I've got here is uh, three additional planes that have appeared and I can quickly just scroll this bar along and it will control what is in focus in my model and so you want that middle plane there to be kind of cutting through the middle of your model and that will make sure your your model is in focus as you go ahead and create your rendering okay so I've, I've gone through all of this I need to ensure perspective is on to give me that realistic look click OK and I've now created my camera. Now to see what's going to happen to my render as I go ahead and edit it, I'm going to create a second viewport. So I'm going to click two view vertical viewport and you can see I've got these two views side by side. So if I click on the right hand side and I hit my space bar, I can now go to this new camera which of course I could have renamed if I'd wanted. So I go to camera one and I can now see what that camera is going to be showing to me so if I now click integrated preview that's now going to show me um, a preview of what my image will look like as I go ahead and edit it over here so as I'm editing options we'll see that okay so now that we've come this far we can go ahead and edit our scene now if I click on my left hand view I can go ahead and use any of the preset SolidWorks uh, views so I can choose this one here, Backdrop, Backdrop Studio Background. But once I'm in here, if I want to change anything, I can do that. So I can go ahead and edit my scene. And I've got a few tabs here in my Basic tab. You can change, for example, you can have a basic color as the background, or you can have a gradient. So I can change my top gradient. I'm going to go for this light gray here. And for my base gradient, I'm going to go for this darker gray color here. So we can see it applies over on the side here, on the right hand side, and you can also control the floor reflections, etc., and where your bottom view plane will be. We're not going to take a look at that right now though. So if I skip over to my illuminations tab, we've got control of the background illumination, which makes it lighter or darker. So I'm just going to turn that down to about 1.2. And then the rendering brightness controls the brightness of your actual model itself. So I'm going to, again, I'm not going to faff around with that too much. I'll leave it down at about 1.5. And then you've got scene reflectivity, which you can turn up or down. And again, we won't modify that today, but that's where that is if you want to edit that yourself. So I click OK on that. We're now good to go ahead. Now in terms of lights, if we expand our lights, we can see we've got the ambient light, which is kind of your, your general sunlight. Um, and then we've got two directional lights. Now currently, these two items are yellow, which means they're on in SolidWorks. But these two items are gray, which means they're currently off in PhotoView 360. So I'm going to go here and I'm going to switch it on. Uh, sorry, that was a right click there. And I'm going to click it on in PhotoView. 
Now once I've done that, and I want to do it with my second one as well, I can now go ahead and edit these lights. So if I edit this directional light, I can zoom out a little bit, and you can see a, a bit of a, a preview there of where that light is going to be coming at your model from. Um, you can change that around, and if you switch to your photo view tab, you can also apply a shadow with that light. So you can see my shadow has appeared here on my right hand side now. So I'm going to tick OK on that one, and I'm going to also edit my second light. So again, right click, edit directional light, go to my photo view tab, and uh, I'm just going to, on this one, I'm just going to swing the, the light around ever so slightly to my right hand side here. I want to put shadow on, and this time I want a bit more of a hazy shadow to appear on this one. So I'm going to turn up my shadow softness to 8 degrees, click OK on that, and it's going to go ahead and apply that for me in my rendering. So again, this has given me a, a bit of a, an overview of what's going to be going on. Now before you go ahead and render it, this has given you a rough preview of what you're looking at, you want to set up some options. So when you go to your options, you generally, if you're producing a final render, you want your render quality to be set to max or best. I'm going to set mine to maximum so that this doesn't take too long to process. I'm going to change my image size to quite small here, but as you can see, you can do larger images. Obviously, be aware that the larger image size you go for, the longer it's going to take to render it. Okay, and I'm happy with the rest of my settings there. So I'll click OK on that. And now I'm ready to go ahead and produce a final render of that. So I'll uh, take a quick pause as this will take a little bit of time to process and then uh, we'll take a look and see the results that we get. So I'll click that and uh, speak to you in a bit. Okay guys, so we're now back. Um, we can see the render that's been produced here. And we can now go ahead and save this image out, but just to point out a couple of things before we do that, you can see the nice crisp shadow that's appeared to the right hand side. We've got our softer shadow over to the left, we can see the reflectivity on the grass. There's also a bit of reflection in the ground there. So these are all settings that we've got control over. And now I can go ahead and save this image out. And uh, as you can see, you can save it out to, to various formats there. So I'm just going to overwrite this one that I've done earlier, Beaker JPEG. And that, guys, is how you go about um, creating a render within PhotoView 360. It gives you a few ideas to work with anyway. Thank you.